Hey guys, it's Dave here from Creative Path Films, and in today's video, we're exploring Headroom. If you're new to video and photography and you're looking for a primer on composition, then learning the fundamentals of Headroom is a great place to start. So what is Headroom? Headroom is simply the space between the top of your subject's head and the top of the frame. This can be either a small gap or a large gap, depending on your shot size and depending on the style of your production. But how do we know how much headroom is the right amount? If we have too little headroom, then the shot starts to crop the subject's head and this can feel very uncomfortable and claustrophobic. On the other hand, if we have too much headroom, it can feel really unbalanced and bottom heavy, like there's a giant invisible weight bearing down on the top of the subject. So we need to figure out what is that Goldilocks zone? Not too little, not too much, just the right amount. Because the goal with headroom is to create visual balance. To work out approximately how much headroom to use, we need to have an understanding of a compositional rule known as the rule of thirds. Now I'm gonna be doing an entire video on this subject, so make sure you're subscribed if you'd like to see that one. But let me give you the hard and fast version. The rule of thirds suggests that you should mentally divide your frame into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. The idea is that you place the most important visual elements on those third lines, and in particular, on the intersect points where those lines meet. The theory is that these points are the most visually interesting points for a viewer. So now let's tie this back to headroom. What's the most visually important element when you're shooting a person? That's right, their eyes. So this guideline suggests that if we position the eyes on the top third line, we should have a good amount of headroom in most circumstances. I say in most circumstances because this rule doesn't always work perfectly 100% of the time, but it is a great place to start when you're just starting out and you're still developing your compositional eye. Where this rule starts to fall apart is in shots wider than a medium shot and shots tighter than a close-up. When you put the eyes on the top third of a wide shot, it starts to make the shot feel very bottom heavy with too much negative space above the head. A better thing to do in this instance is to use symmetry and to create an even amount of space both underfoot and overhead. Conversely, on big close-ups and extreme close-ups, it can start to crop out important elements such as the actor's mouth and this again makes the shot feel unbalanced. A better thing to do in this instance is again create symmetry and have an even amount of space above the eyes and below the mouth. You have to use your own judgment a little bit in these kinds of shots. If you don't know what these shot sizes are, we'll also be doing a video on this topic very soon, so keep an eye out for that one. The thing to remember is that this rule isn't so much a rule, it's more of a guide. How much headroom you use will become a matter of personal preference and will change depending on the look and style you're trying to create. It's once you understand rules like this that you can really learn how to start bending or even breaking them. And sometimes this can be done to great effect and can really help improve your storytelling. Let's say you have a character that's feeling grief and loss. Well, you might frame them in a wide shot and position their eyes lower in the frame. This will make the audience feel like there's a weight bearing down on that character and it will really make them empathize with that emotion that they're going through. The legendary Conrad Hall used this to great effect in the film Road to Perdition. Conversely, let's say you've got a character that's a bit unhinged, a bit hysterical. Sometimes by going tight and cropping off the head in an unusual way, this can really make that character feel unbalanced and on edge. And it can be very effective for certain types of films. These kind of shots are best used sparingly because that maximizes their impact. At the end of the day, these rules are there to be broken, but you should always do so with intention and a clear understanding of why. Hit like if you agree. Well, that's it for Headroom. If you liked this video, I'm gonna be doing a follow-up on looking room or leading room. So make sure you subscribe to learn about that one. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.